Imagine for a minute that you've got products or services that are in high demand. You're running a successful business, but one day you realize, in the words of the talking heads, this is not your beautiful life. So you pack it all in and you become an employee. Sound a little bit interesting and bizarre? Well, it's what happened to today's guest in the Commerce Collab. Stick around to hear her story and what you can learn about pivoting and making major life changes. I'm Ray Spikerman, and almost every week I go live inside this group, the Commerce Collab, to help give you tips that sustainably scale your product-based business. And today I am like beyond thrilled to be talking with my good friend, Katie Spellman. When I first scheduled this interview with Katie back in, I don't know what it was, like June or July, uh, it was going to be about Facebook ads because Katie at that time was my go-to expert on ads. But between then and now, as you're going to hear today, things really changed for Katie. And when she asked me, do you still want me to come talk about ads? Do you even want me to come talk to your group? I was like, well, no, let's like roll with this. Let's, let's take this story of yours and use it as a teaching moment for people. And Katie was totally down for it. So here we are. I'm going to shut up. Welcome, Katie. I'm just really happy to have you here. Hello. I'm so glad to be here. Um, happy Tuesday. Yeah. Is it Tuesday? It is. <laughs> it is today, I think. <laughs> We've got a really, really gray day here. Like um, autumn has decided, yeah, I'm here. How about you? Yeah, it, it was like really chilly out when I took the dog out this morning and I was like, mm, I like this. I, yeah, that I'm ready for fall. I've been like in my fleece, even though it's been 90 degrees, just because I'm like, I'm willing it to happen. So oh, I like that. You're like, all right, fall. I've got my fleece on. It's your turn now. Yep. I am waiting, ready for it. <laughs> I have... um. I've got so many questions for you, Katie, but I want to say like, first, I miss you. We haven't talked probably since you came into my group to do some teaching last May. And I think, so. I think that was about the last time we like chatted, chatted for real. I know. Well, and we haven't had a good chat between you and me, but, and I was telling you on the side, like, I, I love sharing you live with this group here and these folks. I've got my friend Carla is here joining us live. I'm sure other people will show up, but I also kind of wanted to catch up with you alone. However, in preparation for our call, I have brought a the diet, diet Pepsi. Pepsi. Yes. <gasps> Yay. Yes. Just for you. So makes me happy. As I told uh, people listening in or watching the replay, we were going to talk about ads, right? And then what? here we are now talking about like why that's no longer your bag. So can you please tell me the lowdown. What happened? Yeah. What did you have to work through to make this massive change? Like, tell me the story. Yeah. So the 30 second backstory is that I've had this, this business, um, for, you know, three to almost four years now where I have pivoted from, or kind of shifted from social media management into Facebook ads. Um, and I think a lot of people would say that I had a really not a, maybe a really successful business, but like I was making it as an entrepreneur. Um, but I was just so deeply unhappy and it was very difficult to come to terms with that. Um, because, you know, my job was giving me everything it was supposed to right? flexibility, freedom, um, all that kind of stuff. And I just felt like really unsatisfied and really unhappy. Um, and that sucks. That's a crappy feeling. And so I tried a lot of things to fix that. And I, I am really happy with all the things I tried. Like I've had coaching, I've, you know, paid for different, um, uh, not masterminds, but you know, just like that kind of stuff and, and courses to try to, you know, do this, that I've hired people into my business and like, none of it worked. And finally, I just had to be like, maybe it's the business. That's the problem. Um, and that's a weird place to be because that's something I don't think we talk a lot about entrepreneurship is that it might not be for everyone and that it might not be for you right now. Is that maybe that's a good way to say it um, to come to grips with that kind of stuff sucks. <laughs> it's, it's not an easy path. Um, 
I uh, worked with a therapist for a while, or I mean, I still am now, but I had not done that previously. So I had no experience in that and um, was just trying to figure out like, what's going on here, you know? And that allowed me to shed some light on, on different things. Um, and I'll never forget the moment that I think things became crystal clear is that um, my coach had encouraged me to maybe think about bringing someone on to help with some of the tasks that I didn't love so much. Um, I'm like, okay, great. So I was sitting there writing this job description of what I'm supposed to be doing in my job that I would be looking for someone else to do. And I was like, I don't meet any of these criteria myself. Why on earth am I doing this? <laughs> And I sat with that for a while Um, and it just was like, I think that was kind of the crystal, the, the, the moment where it became very clear, like you don't even, you wouldn't even hire you for this role. So maybe it's not you. That's the problem. Maybe it's the role and the combination of the two. So, yeah. So then I closed down my business and I got a, a J-O-B, um, that I'm extremely happy in right now. <laughs> like, and, you know, and, and I, I, I know that's not for everyone. I'm not here to say it's one thing or another. I just think it's the conversation I'd love to have with you today is like, how do you figure that out for yourself? If something's not feeling great, you know, like, how do you go through that and figure that out? And what does it look like? And maybe what are some of those cues that you can look for in yourself and externally to feel on track, you know? Yeah, I'm imagining what you probably had to navigate in making this decision. Because I think when we make a decision to be entrepreneurs, there's there's a lot of cultural expectations around it. There's expectations we have for ourselves. And there's this feeling of I'm going to, you know, it's the whole America, especially in America, the American bootstraps mentality and um, the ideas around freedom and individuality and calling my own shots. Like this is deep rooted stuff. Yep. And it's what drives so many of us as entrepreneurs. So then when you're faced with this, I'm miserable in my business, it really does become a bit of an identity crisis. I would imagine it, it really did. Um, And something that I had to work on a lot was like, what's my identity of myself and not the identity that other people are putting onto me? Um, Because, you know, people say things that are always met as compliments, um, like you're so this, or you're such a free spirit and you're so creative and you're so, there's these things that people say to me and I'm like, I do not see myself like that. And you know, I think, you know, knowing people's maybe interpretation of your actions and your words is one thing, but then also just kind of having this like steadfast belief and like, okay, that's cool. I'm glad you want to use that word to describe me, but like, these are my priorities and these are my things that I feel really good about. Um, and maybe these are my things to work on. Cause you know, like we all have that and that's fine, but, um, it was like a, a, a identity, (laughs) Crisis isn't a good word, maybe, but like uncovering. Mm. Yeah, uncovering. Um, And, you know, we all carry around so much stuff into our businesses, whether you're an entrepreneur or whatever, that you you don't realize how much of the personal stuff got set on you. And then the business stuff and the the things that clients expect and the things that your, your, you know, your, your colleagues and your people around you, your community expect. Um, and like taking that moment and really just being like, what's best for me, you know, and, and just like getting really selfish for a little bit and just saying what's best for me and sitting with it. Cause it took me months to, I, I felt very unhappy for over a year. I started working with a therapist last February. Um, and it took me months to get there, but once I did, I'm not gonna lie. Like once I told my first client. I'm closing my business. And I said the words out loud and I fired them and told them they had to go find someone new. I felt like the weight of the world had been lifted off my shoulders. Like, and then, you know, I've only been in the, in my new role a couple of weeks now. And 
I've kind of been doing these little internal checks, like, yep, everything's not perfect because nothing ever is, but am I balanced more in the things that I was looking for? And like the answer is yes so far. So there's that. And I also think a big learning point for me was just that you have to be able to accept the fact that you are a growing human being Mm -hmm. and what worked for you at one point might not work for you right now. And what works for you right now might not work for you in 10 years. It's really hard because I'm the type of person that wants to have like that 10 year plan and be like, everything's going to go this way. And to just be like, "Eh, you know what, in 10 years, maybe I'm here. Maybe I'm back in the entrepreneur world. Maybe I'm doing something different. That is frightening to me because I want it to be crystal, like a map, like I can just write it out, hand it to my tax guy and be like, this is my life's plan. This is, this is how it's happening. And it's not. And so getting really okay with that and just saying like, well, this is what's great for me right now. And then always having that time. I think I'll always make time to check in with myself and be brutally honest with like the level of happiness and where that's coming from. You know, the checking in with yourself piece that especially you were talking about a few minutes ago, Heather, who is joining us here live has said that it's always a good thing for her to look at. She's got a couple of little girls and she says it's taken her a long time too to learn it and to figure out how to model it for her kids. Yep. And, and she also is remarking that the life blueprints are comforting, but they never plan out as expected. And I think Katie, what's really cool that you just said, and I don't know if you'll agree with me, but I think it's actually quite a courageous decision to be willing to say like, it's fine if right now in this moment in my life, I'm an employee. And then in five years, maybe I'll be a business owner again. And I can go back and forth because I think we often create lives as adults where we like keep building upon one thing, right? Like there's this life plan and one thing just stacks like on top of the other and your path on the outside might look like that's not what's happening, but I tend to believe that it still stacks. It just looks different. It does. It absolutely does. And Um, you know, that idea that maybe I go back and forth between entrepreneurship and it's, it's so funny because I have already had like three ideas since I closed my business. Maybe I should do this. And I was like, no, not right now. Okay. Like if you love that idea, you will love it still in three to five years. Right now we're committing to this choice. And I think part of it is making that commitment. And it is, it does take a lot of courage, um, especially, especially I think for me, the hardest part was I had such a beautiful community online. Like I loved my clients. It was never anything about the people I worked with. Um, You know, our, our coaching group that we were in, like that kind of, those people just made me happy every day. And to feel like, I'm going to lose that was really hard um, Mm -hmm. because that's a real thing. Like I just, I just don't literally, I just don't see you and Jocelyn and Jen and all the other folks that I talk to on a fairly regular basis, even if it was just like DMing or in a Facebook, you know, chat thing, like it's just not as much anymore. Um, And that was really, really hard. It really Mm -hmm. took, took me back to think like, do, am I willing to let go of some level of control? Um, over that. And I just had to be like, yes, because the relationships that I want to keep continuing with, we will keep continuing with them. You know, like, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to say like, well, if this part of this goes away, everything associated with that goes away, all the good things and all the bad things. And it's like, no, you get to choose what you want to take with you, (laughs) you know, and you get to choose which maybe you want to leave behind. And so like, I was just messaging one of my past clients the other day because he had a launch this week and I knew it was this week. And I was like, I hope you have a great launch. Those are the things that were still important to me because it was the people and not the work. Um, And so I'm like, well, I can still, they're not cutting, they're not cutting me out, you know, like we can still absolutely still talk. Um, and so that's been really great, but it, it, it's hard to, to kind of like filter through all of those choices and sit with that stuff for a while. And, and then you just have to kind of just, like you said, be courageous and just be like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do this and I'm going to commit to it for a while. Like that, that's my goal to myself is like, obviously if something changes and I'm, I'm really miserable in this job, like 
a year from now, then uh, I don't want to be miserable, but like, I want to commit to something for a good while. I committed to this, you know, my, my entrepreneurship business for three years um, as that role. And for the folks that aren't aware, I also am a photographer and I've been a photographer running in the, our family photography business since 2013. So I've been running two businesses that way. And the photography is like really low key. I don't even market it. It's all the same repeat clients and stuff. But, you know, when you start adding all those things on, it, it adds up. Um, but I committed to those things for a while to see if they would work, you know, and I'm really proud of that. I'm, I really am proud of the way I tried to make my business work with me, work for me. And I'm really proud of to have that time to say, okay, this we tried, like we didn't try for three months. We, we tried for three years. It's, it's okay to let it go. Like that was a good value effort. Nobody's going to say you're flaky. Like all those internal things that I was telling myself, oh, somebody's going to think I'm flaky. They're going to think that I just don't want to work. They're going to think that I'm lazy, you know, or whatever you like, you're telling yourself in your head about whatever you're kind of like going through right now it's all there. I mean, it's, it's doesn't go away when I still see people and they're like, Oh, are you still running your marketing business? And I'm like, no, like every time I have to say that right now, there's like a little jab, mm. a little prideful piece, you know, where I was like, me, I did have that. Now it's gone. Um, and yeah, it like our egos kind of sneak in, in those moments, don't they? Yes. Like that, that feel like failure or whatever it might be, you might be calling it like, things just a little and then I'm then I just have to like give myself that reset and be like okay but did you wake up happy today and I'm like mm, I did I like that that's a good thing to do you know <laughs> like yes. let's, let's aim for that you know if that's like our baseline then that's a pretty good baseline mm, there's like there's a lot that you said that I want to unpack and kind of reiterate for people but three big ones that stood out for me is first the idea of nuance so in other words just because we're making a change or letting something go doesn't mean that it, like we, we don't need to catastrophize it. Like you and I are still having this conversation here and like you can email at me at any time. I don't, when I say, I don't care that you have a job. It's not that I don't care about you, but it's like, I don't feel like my relationship with you hinges on that. So one of the lessons on my I, identity as an entrepreneur, right, right. You, you know, you like, don't have to lose all the things just because we're making a change. Right. And then you said the big, uh, another big one was when you make a decision, at least like honoring it by having a, a, some semblance of a commitment to that choice rather than after a month, you know, the honeymoon period's done and you're like, okay, yeah, that didn't work. You'll never find out if something does make sense for you or not. And it reminds me, by the way, I got a koosh ball the other day. I love it. Yeah, I had this as a kid. I love these things. It reminds me of there's been times in my business where I've said to myself, I feel like if I don't do this and like see it through, I don't want to be kicking myself in five years. And it reminds me a bit of that, whether we're talking about entrepreneurship, making a big change in life, yeah. letting go of your business, at least like give that choice of yours, the respect of a commitment for a while so that you can adequately measure like Katie did yeah, I tried this for five, three, three years and I gave it a really darn good go. I think that's a long enough time for me to decide I need something else. And then the third thing, I think at the end you were talking about, oh, a happy, like, do, did I wake up and, and am I happy? And what a hell of a metric. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very, uh, uh, it's not like one of those smart goals where you're like, is it specific? Is it measurable? No, it's very just gut feeling. Mm. Did I wake up happy? Yeah. You know, I'm I wake working up, with did, maybe not, maybe it's not seven days a week, but did I wake up happy like five out of seven days mm. a week? That's probably pretty good metric, you know? Um, and in the world of like unicorns and rainbows, it'd be great that we're happy all the time, that you have that perfect job, that there's no, no parts of it that you don't like or whatever. Like there's always a trade-off right? Like, there's always a trade-off. There's always going to be a shitty day. There's going to be a day where you wake up in a crappy mood. There's going to be a week where you wake up in a crappy mood. There's, you know, I mean, it, it's not that we aim for rainbows and sunshine. It's just like, I want to make sure that when I look back, the balances are tipped in the scale of happy days. And that's kind of the metric I'm using. 
Yeah, I, you and I haven't talked in a while, but I have been working with coaches on my own where instead of it being about like the strategic things in business, um, you know, like how you set things up and like the funnels and all the marketing yeah. stuff, it's, it's actually more about what do I need to do in my business to not burn out and to like operate. I mean, they call it like from the feminine, which is a little woo for me, but it's fine. Yeah. It, but it's, it's kind of like what you're talking about where, how do I make decisions from my gut that are about like, like a hell yes versus a, I do not want to do that. And it has been a bit of a ride for me too, emotionally, because you mentioned something like that's not a smart goal, right? But we live in a world where that is prioritized, that's value, like those kinds of very hard metrics. And it's often like poo-pooed to look at a goal of do I wake up happy as being a good goal, but I think it's a perfectly equally valid and good way to live and operate in your life. Yeah, I think, um, so, and Reese, I don't know if I even shared this with you, but at the end of May, it would have been right after we had our class, um, my dad had a heart attack and mm -hmm. it was probably a trauma that I still need to deal with. Like I had to drive him to the hospital. He was having a heart attack as I drove him to the hospital at 2 a.m. And I sat there and watched him hooked up to Michigan, you know, like all the things. And lo and behold, we find out like, and he's a reasonably healthy man and he's 73. So, you know, um, their age is a factor. Um, but we find out he has, um, blockages, like 90% blockages in his heart. So he's scheduled for a quadruple heart bypass. So that happens in a span of seven days at the same time, my son breaks his arm, which he's never in one kid, you know, first broken bone. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like literally been the most stressful time of my life, you know? And I don't like, I don't like to be all woo about it and be like, because we had this like near death experience with my dad that it changed things. But I do think when you have a moment that you get a little bit of laser focus or you experience the, the threat of loss, um, it does, it does give you some perspective. And that perspective for me was like, if I look back when I'm 73, um, I'm not going to remember whatever smart goal I set for myself. I'm never going to remember if I hit such and such income goal or whatever. I'm probably just going to hopefully be thinking about how happy I am or how happy I was or how my, I got to spend time with my kid or you know, got to go outside and not be chained to my desk all the time, you know, and how I actually lived the values that I like to say that I have. Um, and that kind of shifted some focus and my dad is great right now. So like, thank, thank God for modern medicine. Um, but I think that happened all at the same time where I was feeling badly about these, this work stuff and I was working through it and I wasn't sure and then I just had that perspective moment of being like, does this shit matter when I'm 73? <laughs> like, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. And for me, that really, you know, kind of helped me come to terms with what I probably already knew in my gut needed to happen. Like I knew that I did not like this job and I, I did not like my, my company and my business. So I'm like, okay how do you come to terms with that? What does the next steps look like? You know? Um, but it, it kind of like brought, brought up the things that I think had been rumbling deep inside for a while. Um, I don't want anybody to have to go through that. Like, but I honestly, sometimes I think, you know, you go through a little bit of the fire and you get burned a little bit and that makes you a little bit stronger. Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know if I'd be in this position now had that experience not happened to me this summer, um, only because I don't know if it would have snapped me out of the churn. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. would I have just kept churning around? Um, that disrupted my life for a solid month. Um, and that just like gave me more time to think about things too, you know? Um, so I, I, I think 
I don't know where I was going with that, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but um, I, I think sometimes you'll have those moments where it becomes really clear and it, it snaps you out. Yeah, like we'll have, it's catalyst, right? And mm -hmm. I, I've talked about this before, I think to this group, but I had my own version of it back in 2017 when I had all this health crap happen and yeah. like an autoimmune disease, I was tanked. And it was for me, the change for me wasn't like Katie's where it was like, all right, I'm going to stop doing the business. I'm going to be an yeah. employee. It was more like, for me, I was so chronically stressed from my clients and the kind of work I was doing, but I knew I still wanted to be a business owner. So I really changed what kind of clients I took on, what kind of business I did, but similar to what you're saying, it took that kind of like a catalyst type event for me to be willing to confront more directly something that had been kind of brewing in the background for a while. Yeah. And like these health issues, like I think those tend to be a catalyst because it makes us be a little bit aware of our mortality. But like, if you're, I would just say, if you're sitting here and you're like, hmm, some of this is resonating, but you gotta, you're like, I gotta wait until somebody no. has, so, you know, I'm like, no. But I, I think what helped me was the fact that it got me out of my rhythm. So if you're kind of in this place where you're like, maybe I'm identifying with some of these things. Maybe there's this thing that I'm kind of still working through this gut thing, like whatever you can do to break your rhythm, mm. <laughs> I think can be a catalyst. It doesn't have to be this like scary life health event thing. It could be, you know, I am going to just do something very different for the next three to four weeks. That is like very different than my normal rhythm. Um, you know, and, and just kind of somehow give yourself that jump start to think of things a little bit differently. It could just be like, I'm going to go see a therapist and talk about it. That can be your yeah. catalyst, you know, like doesn't have to. And like, I was seeing a therapist before my dad had his, his issues. And so I, I was very grateful of it at that point, because that was like some good support, but it was, that had already started getting me out of my churn, you know, and, yeah. and out of my head, honestly, sometimes I think there's no other way to do it than to get out of your own head about it and start saying it out loud or journaling it or whatever you need to do to kind of work out their, your thought process on it and say the scary things out loud. Because when I said, mm -hmm. I think I want to close my business. I think I'm going to close my business. I want to close. Like it was, it went from like a maybe and a question and then to a statement. I am closing my business, but it took a while to get there, you know? Um, and it also took a while to get to this idea that like, and that means I'm going to go be an employee. And that's a dirty word. We don't talk about employees in entrepreneurship land because we don't want to be doing that, you know? And that had been ingrained in me for a very long time in this entrepreneurship world. Like I said, I've been running my photography business since 2013. And it's just like, you do whatever you have to do to never have to go back and get a job. And I feel like that's a very toxic like now that I'm slightly removed, I feel like it's a very toxic message because for me, the best thing for me was to go back and get a job and be an employee. And that's, you know, specific to this, this example here, but like sometimes the messaging that we're getting, it doesn't seem bad because it seems empowering. Like you got this, you can do this. Everybody should want this you know, and then you, if you give yourself that space, <laughs> you're like, well, I could see where maybe that wasn't the right message for everyone and things that are well-intentioned in terms of encouragement, um, because being an entrepreneur is hard. You do need the encouragement, um, can also be a little bit detrimental in some ways, you know, and then that, that was actually the hardest thing is for, to close my business, not that bad. If I had closed my business and been like, I'm just going to be a stay at home mom. I don't think people would have said anything, but the fact that I was closing my business and getting a job, oh, that made all sorts of bells and whistles go off in my head. Like you're not supposed to do that. That's the, thing, the one thing that you're not supposed to have happen. You've done all this coaching. You've paid all this money for all these years to never make sure you were in the spot again. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. That internal monologue. It's real, you know, and we all have that about whatever it is we're kind of trying to overcome. And I think of people that, you know, I have a child, um, but I know some people that choose not to have children. That's great for them. But 
wow, talk about being blasted with messaging that is intended to be encouraging and, 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 and loving most of the time. But then when you just sit there and make that decision, like, okay, but I'm going to intentionally maybe not have a child. That's hard. And we're, and, and we're kind of in the same place with our, we have one son. Well, now it's like, everybody's like, well, where's the, you're getting old. You better have another one. And so it's like facing those types of messaging and just having that, you know, now that I've kind of seen it this way with all my job stuff, I see where all that can kind of be a little toxic too. Like all this pressure for me to keep churning out children <laughs> without being entirely sure that I want that. Um, and so having that time and, and just kind of taking what I've experienced in the last couple of year, uh, months and really applying that going forward to like all these different things through that lens of like, what is the messaging I'm receiving around this? It might be well-intentioned, but is it maybe toxic to me and what I need right now? And, you know, how can I give myself the space to think about this and come to my own conclusions and what support do I need to help me get to those, those places, you know? Um, because we're all, we're all facing our own things, whether it's entrepreneurship and jobs and who knows, you know, it's, it's all out there. Um, but those are kind of the things that I've kind of identified and I'm like, oh, I'm going to just kind of carry these steps through, I think through the rest of my life. Cause it's working. Mm. I think too, you've hit upon something that probably is what makes it hard for people to make major changes or holds them back. And that's the surrounding cultural pressure, whether that's like the culture at large or your internal like family structure, like the people closest to you. It's very hard, I think, for a lot of people to carve their own path when faced with that and trying to filter through, as you've described, you've done, Katie, what's mine and what's theirs? Like, in other words, what's other people's either biases, expectations, um, messages imprinted on me and what's right for me. And I think that discernment is really quite the challenge here. Like, do you, would you agree that you think that might be what holds a lot of people back from making major decisions like this as adults? Yeah. Um, I think my fear of disappointing others, mm. uh, really held me back from making this decision for a very long time. Yeah. A very long time. And it's still there. I mean, that fear of, and, and I, the word you used is imprint. And that's a really good word because it is imprinted on us that we, you know, do, do these cultural norms, you know, like, um, and so like, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm worried all the time that I'm disappointing my in-laws and my parents that we don't have two kids that we don't have you know, that we just have one. Well, but you love him. You're such a good mom. I'm yeah. like, cool. I'm glad. Yes, I am. We're going to stick to one right now. <laughs> like maybe that, again, maybe that changes in the future, but like right now it's one. <laughs> um, and it's that fear. Like I, I felt so much fear of disappointment. Um, I felt like I was going to disappoint my clients. I was going to disappoint my coach. I was going to disappoint my community of friends. I was going to disappoint everyone. And you know what the thing is, is like, I, it is that courageous thing. Cause there, that fear is there and you just have to go for it. And then I made this decision and a couple of weeks ago on my first day at my job, um, I posted a picture on Facebook and just did a really quick little, like, Hey guys, this is this life change, you know, and all those things that I was so afraid people would say, absolutely. No one said it. No one has said a single bad thing to me that I imagined in my head. My clients miss me, but they know that they can come talk to me anytime. And they have, which I love. I love that I had this relationship with them. I'm still talking to all my beautiful friends that I met in my community and everybody else that was like, saw that Facebook, they were like, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you. This is awesome. Like all these encouraging things, like, you know, I was so worried about the disappointment that I never thought about the beauty of what other people might be saying, like, good. Number one, people don't care about you as much as you think they do. You're the only one that cares about you that much. <laughs> so that's, 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 there's that. 
but then everybody that I was thought I was disappointing, like, oh, you're not doing photography anymore. And I was just like, no, nope, but this is who you can go talk to, you know? And like, I made sure all my clients had great new ads managers repping, repping them. So I'm like, I felt like I handed everything off in the best way possible. And then everybody was just so supportive. I never thought, I mean, I had like 120 comments on that stupid Facebook post. I was crying that night because I didn't think anybody would care. And if they did, it would be like, well, you gave it a go. Sorry, you, you turned in the, the keys, you know, like it was none of that. That's all that shit I made up in my head. It was a really good eye opener. Now I, I got to carry that lesson to be like, <laughs> all these things that you think people are going to say, no one says it. Or, and maybe they do. Who cares? Like, you know, because again, I'm waking up every day pretty happy. That's my, my metric. My metric shouldn't be like, what is somebody going to comment on my Facebook post? That's a shitty metric to use. I'm not here to say like, yes or no, but like comment, Facebook post comments are a shitty metric to use to judge the, the life decisions you want to make. Oh my God. So many truth bombs, Katie. So <laughs> like, first of all, I got to say this out loud because it's funny. First, <laughs> Carla agrees with us that mindsets are so hard to overcome, but here's what Heather has to say. This whole talk, when you show up for business coaching and leave with a therapy you didn't know you needed, laugh out loud. And it looks like your friend Jessica Hitchcock is here and she's Jessica! really excited. Yeah. Yay. Um, you, I really love what you said about you worry about all the possible, I think you said something like disappointment or, yeah. and then, and you forget about the beautiful things that might happen on the other end. I remember when our, mutual, one of our mutual friends told me about, you know, you're ending your business and you're getting a job. And like two thoughts simultaneously went through my head. I was like, holy shit, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. I, and I was a little worried for you. And, and my first thought in my head was, did a client really crap on her? But then the second part I thought was, I want her to be happy. Like, and that was the sign. And I have a feeling that's what you're seeing reflected in those Facebook posts is that people who really do care about you. They're going to like truly, truly care. Yeah. They're going to want you to be happy. And then the people who, who are like, if, if they exist are like overstepping and saying things, I would argue they don't really care about you. Their, their own stuff is coming up yeah. and you're like, it's being projected onto you. Yeah. You know, um, one thing, and I'll share this to continue the, the, the couch therapy that we're doing here. Yeah. My therapist had shared with me, she's like, if somebody doesn't know your birthday, your favorite food, and you know what you did last weekend, they probably don't know you well enough to have an opinion on your life. Huh. And I was like, that is excellent. <laughs> Cause like, when I think of all my, my close friends and my sisters, like that we're talking with all the time, I'm like, they know all that shit. I will listen to their reflection of just being like, Hey, and like you said, like there were some people that were just like, is everything okay? That's a, I love that, that that thought went through your head because it is a major life shift. Anytime you make a major life shift, it gives people pause because a, they've all, always seen you maybe this way. Like, you know, they have their own identity of you too. Um, and to know that they care and they're just like checking in being like, cool. Like, are you doing these for the right reasons? Have you thought this through? Is there something underlying that we need to talk about? That is true love and care and support. And if those people know my birthday, know my favorite color, know my favorite food and what I did last weekend, I will care and validate their opinions. And if it's somebody else, <laughs> well, then, you know, probably time to just ignore that. And that's easier said than done, I'm sure. I didn't even, I didn't even experience that. So I can't sit here and say like, oh, I didn't listen to the trolls. I had no trolls. The trolls were made up in my head. Um, but oh. I think if you're experiencing that, I think that's a really good thing to run yourself through. Like, do they know your birthday? Do they know your favorite food? Do they know what you did last weekend? No. In the words of friends, you know, <laughs> for any of our friends fanatics out there, <laughs> you should know that. <laughs> All right. So we've got like a couple minutes. Yeah. I think it would be really cool if you just left people with some advice for if they feel like a calling, maybe towards something different than what they're doing now. Yeah. 
what do you think, I mean, you've kind of already alluded to them, but what do you think it would be like maybe three things they could do to help them make their decisions? I think one that I didn't touch on at all is just like making sure you're taking care of your health. Um, because at the same time that a lot of this was happening, I wasn't eating incredibly healthy. I wasn't really moving my body in any way. Um, I wasn't terrible, but I wasn't great. Um, and so just doing those things, like going for a walk every day and making sure I ate something green, um, it, it at least allows you to set that piece of the puzzle aside, right? Like, am I yeah. feeling crappy because of this? Or is it, you know, if I like, you know, and it's, I think especially as women, we always have that monkey on our back somehow. Um, and so, you know, kind of try whatever that means to you, eat a little healthy, move, move your body a little bit. That's good. Um, I think whatever you can do to pull yourself out of the, the, the churn, like I mentioned, um, would be good. Uh, I, I don't honestly know if I'm going to continue going to therapy. Like it served me when I needed it to. Yeah. I, I, and I think therapy gets this rap of being like, it's kind of like the chiropractor. Like once you go, you have to go back forever and ever and ever. And it's like, I don't think so. I'm in a really good place. And I, I can't say I'm like, I'll probably go to one more appointment. And then I might just be like, maybe I'll catch you in six months. And this might just be more like a check-in time to kind of like stay in that well, you know, like in a wellness arena. Um, so I think if, if that's the thing that's like, you want to talk it through with someone, great, do it. Um, if that someone can be your sister <laughs> or your best friend, cool. You know, but I would also say um, have them, agree to that relationship because you don't want to be dumping all your shit on someone that is not actually yeah. ready and prepared to help you sort through it, you know? Um, and keep in mind that your sister and your friends, they love you and they don't want you to have any pain. And so they're not a completely neutral party. Um, so that's, I, I guess that'd be my plug for therapy. If that's your jam or just journaling, just anything that like allows you to talk it out loud or like write it down and get it out of your body, I think was really great as you're trying to make big, those big decisions. Um, so yeah. And then I think just a little tiny bit of courage, wherever you have to dig it up from, if it's stored in your pinky toe, dig it up deep, find it and just let it grow. Cause I would not say I'm a incredibly courageous person. Um, but I will say that I had an incredibly courageous summer <laughs> yeah. and I don't think I'm going to just be courageous all year round. Like that was a pretty big life event that was like, okay, we did yeah. that. Um, so it was like it, a container of courage, a container of courage, a volcano of courage at one point. Um, and yeah. And then just kind of, uh, finding that within yourself, wherever that kernel of it may be hidden and giving it a little nurturing to kind of grow in that way. Mm. I love all that Katie. And normally at this point in the show, I usually be like, oh, do you, is there anywhere where people can find you? You have a free gift. But in your oh. case, that's kind of different. Like, got nothing. You're kind of like more of a, a civilian now. <laughs> I'm just I'm a civilian. <laughs> exactly. I even changed, you know, what was crazy when I changed my Instagram profile from business to personal. And I was like, whoa, what's happening here? This is official. This is official. Telling my clients was it official. Changing my business profile from my Instagram profile from business to personal. That makes it official. So yeah, if people want to find me, they sure can. I'm happy to always chat, but yeah, civilian life for me now. Well, I love you anyway. And you know, Thank I don't you. mean that like it sounds. <laughs> I, know, I love it. I'm really proud of you. And I think for everyone who's watching Katie talked about a, a very dramatic type of change going from owning a business to not and being an employee. But it, the message here isn't necessarily like I'm trying to tell all you, oh, it's time to give up your business. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. It's more, there may be something that you know needs to give or change or be different. And it's been sitting in the back of your mind for a while. And hopefully today's conversation and Katie's courage and her talking about making that and what she had to navigate to do so will help you also find like that courage in your pinky toe to do that next step 
to pull yourself, like Katie said, out of the churn or the inertia, take care of your health and then find that courage. So Katie, thank you again so much. I'm going to go and stop the live and then I will wrap it up with you. But thank you everyone who also watched us today and who shared this time with us. I loved seeing you and I will see you again soon for another live. Bye.